water. It's the element that ties the watershed together, that links the estuary to the river that feeds it, and the river to the upland streams. On these hillsides, water collection starts and watershed health begins. A healthy watershed depends on its uplands and network of streams, but it's the riparian area, the zone between the stream and the uplands, where water meets soil that plays a pivotal role in the overall health of our watersheds. It's a fact that commercial fisherman and landowner John Wilson understands. The riparian area is a sensitive area. Uh, it's, it's an area that's easily impacted by other land uses. A highly productive area, a very important area for fish and, and the aquatic ecosystem. This is an area that's worth protecting. Riparian refers to the strip of moist soil and plants bordering a body of water. It may be only a foot or so wide along a small creek with a steep bank, or hundreds of feet wide along a lowland waterway. But these days, land managers look at the entire riparian management area, the transition zone between water's edge and the uplands. In a healthy riparian area, you'll find abundant and diverse plant life. In Oregon's coastal range, for example, a well-functioning riparian area features a mix of trees, large conifers like Douglas fir, cedar and spruce, deciduous trees, alders, ash, and willows. And below the treetops, ferns, shrubs, and grasses cover the moist stream banks. In peak condition, the riparian area is a very busy part of the watershed. It provides food and cover for fish and wildlife. It's a storehouse of organic material that feeds all kinds of creatures. nutrients for insects that are food for birds and fish. The riparian areas are a breeding habitat for birds too. Scientists say they found as many as 550 breeding pairs per 100 acres. Its shady canopy controls sunlight, a factor affecting stream temperature. The same plants bolster bank stability and control erosion. Likewise, in the floodplain, the assorted vegetation holds sediment, water, and organic material, and it filters runoff. Often the riparian area supplies the large wood that falls into the stream, creating ideal fish habitat. Pools cover. And it traps gravel. for spawning beds. Wood adds stability to the channel and structure. It also holds organic material, so essential to the food process. That's the classic riparian function. But landscapes change. Riparian areas are no exception. Mudslides and natural flooding impact the areas, but so do human activities development in roads along waterways, recreation, mining, agriculture, grazing, and logging can affect the riparian function. John Wilson, who lives above Cedar Fork Creek on Oregon's south coast, knows that. Since we took the sheep off of the place, uh, this area has grown back. You can see we've planted fir trees out there. All along here, some nice, nice little redwoods coming in along here. This redwood is actually functioning to hold the bank right now. He's fenced his uh, section of creek and planted trees 
in hopes of someday returning this stretch of riparian area into better fish and wildlife habitat. A new beaver dam shows that's already happening. We've got, uh, of course, raccoons and beavers and otters. And fish are making themselves at home, too. This uh, winter, uh, the Chinook salmon run was real good in, in Cedar Fork Creek. Steep uplands and narrow floodplains are typical of coastal riparian areas. But east of the Cascades, in the high desert country of central Oregon, the geography and vegetation changes from trees to grasses and shrubs. Here, the key riparian function is preserving water quality and quantity. And the grass kind of helps to hold the soil and, and the litter from the grass also uh, reduces the erosion. And uh, people that study this have, have told me that the grass kind of acts like a sort of a, a sponging effect. As we uh, walk through here, we can feel uh, kind of the softness underfoot of this riparian area. What that softness is, is uh, grass and sedge and bulrush and of course a few forbs. Um, and under that is a very, very dense uh, root mass. That mass that we're walking on uh, functions as a sponge, which during the, during the higher flow periods of, of Bear Creek actually absorbs um, water from the stream, which of course comes from the uplands. And then as the year progresses, it slowly uh, and gently releases water back into the system. Uh, and that kind of a function, at least in, in, uh, in this corridor, has, has greatly helped increase the time period and the quantity of water that flows in this uh, creek during the critical late summer, early fall period. It takes time and energy to improve or restore a riparian area, but things can be done to help. Proper livestock management is beneficial to riparian areas. For example, rancher Dick Nelson keeps cattle out of this area during the growing season and brings them in early in the spring. This approach protects the grasses and saves him money on feed. Sure, it saved me money. I wouldn't do it if it didn't. I don't do these for just simply altruistic reasons. It's got to work economically for me or I won't do it. And, uh, and, and it does. Likewise, rancher Runinda McCormick and her family are using fences to improve water capture and release along this stream. And they've planted willows to improve bank stability and enhance wildlife habitat. In western Oregon, landowners are also planting trees to speed up the natural process. The perfect willow stick is uh, straight and uh, approximately one of two to three feet long. And the straighter they are, the better they pound into the ground. Willow cuttings can be planted almost any time by simply driving them deep in the stream bank. Or sometimes a power auger is used to break up compacted soils for easier planting. The whole idea is to create a mix of appropriate trees in the riparian area. Diversity is the watchword in riparian restoration. Sometimes it means re-establishing riparian vegetation where it's been taken out, for example along waterways and pasture land. And other times it means adding different species to create the necessary diversity in a riparian area. Planters use hoedads during the winter months to set conifer seedlings among the hardwoods. Someday these starts will be the large wood for stream structure and habitat. While the conifers will take years to grow, the fast growing willows, shrubs and grasses go to work almost immediately, shading the water contributing food for insects that fish feed on, cover for wildlife, and stabilizing the banks and controlling erosion. Sometimes diversity is created by removing competing brush like blackberries and overabundant species like alder. The unwanted trees can be cut down to create a better balance of hard and soft wood. 
in this case making room for larger and longer lasting conifers that will provide large wood in the future. Riparian improvement and restoration are long-term investments, investments that need protecting. Removing competing vegetation like blackberries and grasses provides more sunlight and water for young trees. Tree protectors limit deer browsing. And building fences and providing off-stream water protects the young plants from livestock. Fences give the entire riparian area with its diverse plant life a chance for your work to take hold, to mature, and begin returning benefits to the watershed. In the form of erosion control, stream nutrients, fish and wildlife habitat, and clean water. And once that happens, we're one step closer to improving our watersheds. Thank you.